Retrieving testnet tokens just got a lot easier. Here's how. So a few months ago, we released the Chainstack faucet. This currently supports Sepolia, Goerly, as well as Binance Smart Chain. You can query it every 24 hours to top up your balance to 0.5 ETH, or if you're using Binance Smart Chain, 0.5 BNB. Now, when we were building this, we had one goal. We wanted this faucet to be as developer-focused as possible. So in achieving that, of course, you know, we did kind of the foundational thing that most faucets do, and that we implemented pretty good UX. DUI is nice, the faucet itself is pretty easy to use, and most of the time, you don't even need a minimum mainnet balance to query it. But beyond Beyond the website itself, beyond the UI, we wanted to implement something that made it truly easy and convenient for developers to use. So our answer to this was the Chainstack Faucet API. This is a REST API that you can implement to automatically top up your testnet balances every 24 hours. This means that every time you need more testnet funds, you don't need to go into a UI and do it manually every 24 hours. Instead, you can set up a script to do this all automatically with our API. This can significantly reduce the friction in gathering testnet funds and ultimately using the testnet itself. So in just four minutes, let's leverage the Chainstack Faucet API to write a script that continually tops up your testnet balance every 24 hours. All right, so to get started here, we'll only need two different libraries. We'll need requests and we'll need time. Okay, so now those are imported, we'll be using requests to send the API call directly, just with a normal post request, and we'll use time to apply the 24 hour cooldown. So let's also define some base variables. I'm gonna find the chain. This will of course go into the URL, in this case, we can do Sepolia. We can define the address that will be receiving the testnet funds. We can also make a variable for the API URL itself. This will be api.chainstack.com slash v1 slash faucet, and then this chain variable that we defined above. And we can also define a variable for the API key that we'll be using for authentication. But first, we'll need to create an API key on our Chainstack account. So I'm on my test account now. We can head over to settings, then API keys, and click create key. Click next, copy this, and click done. Now we can throw that into our variable here called API key. So now that we have our library and our base variables, we can go ahead and create the function itself. We can just call this fill wallet. We can start by throwing in a quick print statement to let us know that it's gone ahead and started the process. Let's open up try, and then we can create a response variable. And within the response variable, we can actually make the API request. We can do requests .post, And then in here, we can start with the API URL and the parameters itself, which in this case will be address, and then that'll be the address variable that we defined above, and then the headers. In this case, for the headers, of course, we'll want to define the authorization header, and then the API key variable that we defined above. Let me also do content type, application, slash JSON. And now we can go ahead and print the result of the call itself. So we can just say API call successful, and then throw in the response.json. We can also just do accept, exception has error, and then go ahead and print out that error if it occurs. So like I mentioned, you can only do this every 24 hours. So at the end of this function here, we're gonna set a time.sleep that waits 24 hours before it calls the function again automatically. Time.sleep, 24, times 60, times 60. So now that we have the fill wallet function actually created, we'll want to continuously call it automatically every 24 hours. So we can do this just by simply opening up a while loop. We can do while true, which will loop forever, and then call the fill wallet function. So we've gone ahead and imported our libraries, defined our base variables, created the fill wallet function, and then we called it here in this while true loop. So let's go ahead and run it and see what it does. Whoops, I forgot an S here. It should be headers instead of header. It's setting the request. And there we go. In the response of the call itself, we can see how much it's sent. A big part of this faucet is that it essentially tops up your balance. So what this means is that if you have 0.1 ETH in your wallet, it'll give you 0.4 to get to 0.5. So it'll essentially top up your balance however much it takes to get to that 0.5 ETH value. We also have the transaction. This is a link to the Etherscan page of the transaction. So let's click this. And in here we can see on Etherscan the transaction hash. We can see that it was a success. This was done about 43 seconds ago. And we can see the value here as well. So perfect. We just created a script that will now automatically every 24 hours, as long as I keep this running, query the same API and continuously top up my testnet balance. But if you'd like to do it manually, you can also do it directly through the UI here. If you'd like to use the faucet through the UI, you can find the link below. If you'd like to watch more Bytes Building videos, then you can also do so through the link below.